He is Detroit royalty, Stugatz. Mm-hmm. He got a video tribute yesterday, a huge ovation at Ford Field. He's a six-time pro bowler, and I believe that he could go out there right now at 38 years old and have eight catches <laughs> for 110 yards. I can't believe he's only 38. I also think he should get a ring if the Lions win it all. Okay, yeah. Calvin Johnson with us, <laughs> and it is nice to see him have a good relationship with the organization because it seemed like it was uh, – it was, I don't know. I I was judging it from afar, so we'll let him talk. Calvin, thank you for being on with us. It's been a pleasure to watch your work for a long time, sir. And uh, we're happy for the success of the Lions. It seems like everybody is. No, it's exciting times around here in Detroit, man. Uh, man, Everybody's giddy. You know, you go anywhere in Detroit, people got their uh, colors on, and you can't can't do nothing but talk football around here right now. How did the relationship get better, Calvin, with uh, with the team? Because I've said before that the franchise has been so hurting for so long that they made not one but two of their legends say, okay, I've had enough, this sport hurts, and I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, how did you fix the relationship so that you're now around and you get to enjoy this with everybody? Yeah, I think a big part of it, man, um, you know, the CEO there, uh, Mike Disner, you know, he went out of his way, you know, to, uh, you know, to bring the two sides back together, you know, obviously um, under Sheila and all that over there. Um, but I'm just appreciative. You know, I always wanted to, you know, be a part of that and have my kids be able, my family be able to go around there, you know, and, you know, see all the good work that I put in and, you know, just to be a part of something like this now, you know, just makes it, you know, that much better. You know, timing was great. <laughs> Athletes obviously can be prideful. So how was that bridge connected, right? Were you hurt by something? Like how, 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 what was the medicine on that? I think the medicine was really just somebody on the other side going out their way to try to bring the two sides together. Cause I couldn't do it. You know, I couldn't do it by myself. I knew I would need somebody from the other side to, to, to send a, a, send a hand. And, and Mike Disner was the one to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm extremely appreciative of, of all he's done for me. Calvin, you played with Dan Campbell, and I'm wondering, if I told you back then when you were playing with him, this would be the guy, this would be the coach that would lead Detroit to the (laughs) NFC Championship game, you would have told me what? I would have told you he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a dude. He, he's a dude. He's going, he's that guy that was out there, you know, we were playing, um, he was starting and had one shoulder, really one arm to work with. I mean, that could be that could tell you where we were as a Lions team at the time, or it could just tell you how good of a guy I was. <laughs> you know, how, how, <laughs> how much of a stud this guy was. You know, I, I would go with the latter, you know, just because of where we are today with him, man. Uh, he's a great guy, and, you know, it's nothing better to have a, a player um, that played in this league as your head coach. But if we were being honest, I just I sidle up next to you and I'm like, the tight, he did a great job the tight, there, Calvin. The, the tight end over there that's got one one arm, uh, Calvin. The highest he he gets to in the coaching ranks is tight end coach, correct? Like that from from that vantage point, it would have been hard to see this. One hundred percent. I can't even lie. I can't even lie. I would me. I mean, honestly, just sitting there knowing Dan, great dude, but I didn't see him as a head coach. I even asked him, like, dog, did you ever see yourself like here in this spot? He was like, man, I believe he, I forget what he said exactly, but I don't believe he saw it at first either. You know, so, but, um, but he just, you know, just being his authentic self, man, it's, it's taking him a long way. You have been around the team more, I think, this year than at any time in the past. Do I have that right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And what has that been like for you? Does any part of you miss it? I think the one thing, not, not only me, but any of the guys, you don't miss the, you know, the the running up and down the field, the pushing weights and all that. You really miss the camaraderie, you know. Now it was great these last two weeks because all the guys that I played with, for the most part, everybody's coming back in town to see these guys play, you know. Because we're proud, you know, we're proud to rep the um, the Honolulu Blue and to see these guys having success now, man. And, you know, it's just we feel like we're part of that as well. Give me some numbers. I put you out there right now. <laughs> right now, I put you out there. What's your stat sheet look like at the end of the game at 38 years old? It, it, if y'all put me out there right now, I'm going to tell y'all, just to put me in inside the 10-yard line so I ain't got to run too far. You know, I can't jump like I used to, but I can still probably go up and catch a fade. <laughs> what 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 did your body feel like at the end, Calvin? Because, I, you know, with Julio Jones and others, I don't think people understand what it's like to carry that frame, play that physically, uh, that sport, what it does to your feet. Like, what when, when you retired, what was your body feeling like? Yeah, man, you know, I played at 240 my whole career. But for me, it's all the joints, you know, my knees, my ankles. You know, I always felt like my, always, like even today sometimes, I feel like my Achilles has just got like one more thread. Like I do something crazy and it's going to go. Same with my knee. I always have sharp pains there. But it was at the time, man, it was just too much. 
it was it was the pain and and all that overweighed you know the joy from the game and you know that's what for me I knew at that time I've accomplished my goals I was like okay it's time to hang them up how hard a decision was it for you like how much did you wrestle with it you know I wrestled with it the whole well I didn't wrestle with it too much the only part I wrestled with was the season that I knew I was going to, after my night during my ninth season I knew I was going to retire um, funny thing is, I would tell my guys at lunch, like I'm done. Like I'm, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell my guys if Kobe retired a year, I'd be like, man, I'm, I'm out of here like Kobe, dog. I'm, I'm, I'm done. And none of the guys were they believed me. None of them believed me. And then at the end of the season, they're like, damn, you was telling the truth the whole time. You was telling us the whole season. But the reason I didn't come out with it was because I didn't want it to be a distraction for the team going throughout the whole season. And it was my, my thing. I, I didn't know how to tell Coach Caldwell. Man, he was, he was one of the best coaches, head coaches I've, I've had in my time. And it just, unfortunately, my body and, and, and where we were at the time, just, you know, I didn't have I didn't have too many more years for him. But, you know, I wish I could have played longer with him. Can you articulate for us the difficulties in playing that game that hurts that way and demands so much from the body when your heart's not in it, when you're at lunch and you're saying, I'm done, you don't want to be at work? It all started in the off season. Well, I'll tell you this. The season before, after my eighth, eighth season, I told my dad, like, Dad, I think I'm done. And he's like, he asked me, like, you think you can do it one more time? And I was just, I sat there and thought about it. And before I could say anything, he's like, well, since you're thinking about it, you could probably do it one more time. And, um, but going into that season, the off season training, I knew I, like, I wasn't able to do all the things that I was doing in the past in order to get myself ready for the season. So I know that, I knew that if I can't put in and do the things that I did in the past, it's going to be hard for me to get out the production that I was able to put out in the past. And with that, you know, just, it came with the, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a, um, a dislike for the game. But it was more so like, geez, like I'll be at games like I'll, I'll tell my guys like I don't know how I'm gonna make it through this game today in pregame. <laughs> it, was just, it would be like that all the time, the whole my whole last year. Did you doubt your decision at any point? Obviously, there's relief at the beginning, the first year. You feel good to be relieved. Yeah, I'm just good to not be in pain. But was there any doubt thereafter? Um, I mean, every time I thought about going back, or if I could go back, I got a quick reminder, you know, how my body felt. You know, uh, whether I go do something physical or whatnot, and I just with the with the pain and the ailments that I had, there's no way that I was going to be able to uh, uh, do a whole another season without getting shot up every game. I mean, shoot, got shot up almost every game anyway, but <laughs> we know that stuff isn't good for you. So you just just trying to put myself in the best position, and you know, I always try to put natural things in my body, and I just wanted to be uh, I wanted to be available for my kids, man. I wanted to be able to play with my kids. And I just saw the way that things were going, man. If I just put in every more year, every other year I put in from this point on, you know, I'm just killing my body. I'm just, just wrecking my body. And I was, I was at the point where, you know, I just, I was just tired of it. Uh, Calvin, I'm wondering here because you own the NFL record for most receiving yards in a season. Did Tariq Hill make you nervous? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were you were watching that? <laughs> hey, hey, if, if Tariq didn't get hurt this year, man, he probably would have took it. You know, I, I yeah, he's uh I mean, with the extra game, man, it's going to get taken at some point. I, I was, I'm fortunate to have had it for over a decade, you know, now. You know, but at some point, you know, this, I feel like every year somebody's getting close to it. Who's the receiver you like watching the most now? Oh, that's tough, man. I love watching my my home team. I love watching those guys. But, you know, I'm and Ron and all those guys. But I love, I love A.J. Brown. Uh, I like watching that kid. I like Devontae Smith. Been a fan of him since he was in Alabama. Um, I know those boys on the on the Eagles. I'm trying to think who else we got out here. Oh, uh, CeeDee Lamb. The boy, the kid plays some good ball. He's a good receiver. Um, who else we got out here? Obviously, Jeff Jefferson and um um uh dang. Um Justin Jefferson and um Chase. Those kids are tough, man. Uh I just you know, and I look at I look at I look at these guys, man, and you know, I just try to see who does it all. You know, who does it all, who blocks, you know, who's uh selfless. You know, and, and who obviously who makes crazy plays out here. You are now the co-founder of a CBD wellness startup. What can you tell us about how it has helped you with this pain you're talking about? Yeah, for sure, man. Um, you know, when we started the company, we wanted to start from an authentic place. You know, products that we use while we're in the league that help us out. So we use topicals. We use a lot of rehydration drinks. And we was like, how can we, um, you know, add on to these products, make them better? And we was like, okay, we're in the cannabis industry, you know, and then so we started our CBD company um, with the behind the premise of we want to bring pharmaceutical technology, you know, to cannabis. We're able to do that um, with our um, with our nanotechnology uh, products that we have. And what basically with the nanotechnology is just 
decreases the, pro the particle size so it can get through the intestinal system and into the bloodstream, making it more bi bioavailable for your body, more useful uh, for your body. So we started with a topical. We're able to add the anti-inflammatory components of uh, CBD, CBG, uh, CBC, and CBN into them. And then do, doing the same thing with a rehydration drink, uh, just really trying to target inflammation both internally and superficially. So when we have a product that's going to be um, that we're going through NSF for sports certification now, basically making a being being able to have uh, products that are approved for collegiate and professional athletes. You know, we feel like we have a product that I mean, obviously I've used it and we, we wouldn't put it on the market because and, until we felt like that it was uh, it was good enough for professionals to be able to use. But it's good. It's, it's not just good for professionals. It's good for anybody that has any. Uh, daily wear and tear, any bumps and bruises uh, that you deal with, or if you're just physical and you have uh, soreness, you know, it's great for any type of inflammation on the body. Um, so that's why, you know, we're excited to be able to get this thing on, onto the professional teams, man. We're, uh, we're on our, well on our way to be able to do it, doing some of those things and being able to uh, announce some, some big news here in, in 2024. But all this stuff is available though on primitiveperformance.com. Very good product. I'm, I'm excited about it. Like I say, anytime I got bumps and bruises, you know, I snowboard, I do all, I stay pretty active. So, um, you know, I'm using it a lot. You guys are funny, though. When you say banged up or bumps and bruises, it's usually a little more than that. So when you say you were getting <laughs> shot up every game, uh, what was the worst of those? Did you get any shots in the feet? Because uh, I've heard uh, I've heard that those are the worst, but I don't know what the worst was for you. I never got one in my, in my feet. I, you know, before game, I would, I would have, like, fluid taken out my knees before game. We would take tordal shots before game just so you can make it through the game. I think the worst thing I ever did, though, was I had a like a – probably like a – Six inch long needle. They stuck down in the middle of my knee, and I thought I was tough. So I'm gonna see. I'm like, I'm gonna sit here and watch. I could take this. I mean, I damn near fell out when they stuck that thing in my knee. <laughs> I fell back on the table. Doctor's like, you all right? I popped back up. I'm good. <laughs> but no, nah, that was probably the craziest thing. It didn't hurt so much. It was just watching the a six inch needle go into your knee. You know, that's probably what, what would knock me out. But you know, crazy. I never had anything. Um, fortunately, you know, to my feet, I had ankles, ankle issues. Those, those suck because it takes forever for those to heal, especially playing receiver. And constantly running, so, um, but yeah, man, that was uh, nothing, uh, nothing with the feet, though. Do you have any stat, any game, any particular thing that uh, is the thing that is proudest for you that you feel the you feel the strongest about? That man, I was, I can allow myself some love here. I was really good at blank. Talking about while playing ball, yes. Um, man, going up on guys, making plays on two, three guys, you know, those are the things that I love the most, you know, going up and catching the ball and all those guys. Heck yeah. When Stafford does the no look thing in the Super Bowl, where it's on a game winning drive in a Super Bowl and he's throwing a no look pass, what's happening with Calvin Johnson in his home as he's watching this? I'm like, he was doing that shit in Detroit. <laughs> they talk about Patrick Mahomes. They talk about Patrick Mahomes doing this. I'm like, damn, Matthew's been doing this thing since he came into the league. <laughs> no one noticed, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody hey, nobody gives us love in Detroit. We don't get none of that. True. Y'all know that. <laughs> uh, he, he's, unusually, he's unusually tough, is he not? Oh, heck yeah. The, the kid is tough, man. Obviously, he's had injuries on uh, the start of his career, but we've seen how he's bounced. I mean, he's been damn near missed his first two seasons. But he came back strong, man. He had he knew he had a lot to make up, and he came back to get it. What's your relationship with Eminem? Uh no, I mean I don't have a huge relationship with Eminem. We 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 see each other, and we're we're always gracious. We always have we have a good relationship. You know, whenever we see each other, I did a little shoot with him ten years ago uh, in Detroit. You know, and it's always good to see the guy, man. He's a legend here in Detroit, and. We know the music, you know, but he's a good dude too, man. Just to be able to sit there and chop it up with. We're talking last week at the game before the game. He was like, he's like, man, I even want to come back and play for this team. I was like, yeah, what number would you wear? And he was sitting there thinking about it. I'm like, come on, man, you know, you got to wear number eight for eight miles. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Calvin. Not to get bogged down, but Patrick Mahomes is better than Matthew Stafford, right? I mean, why are you doing that? I, it just seems look, like look, there was look, a comparison look, look, being look, made. Look, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not even going I'm to entertain checking. that conversation. Right. Okay. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit it's hole. Let you had it. Patrick Mahomes, he's a beast. Patrick Mahomes, I can't even lie, man. The kid don't won two Super Bowls in his first what five, six years. Is that? I don't know if that's accurate, but I mean, damn. The 49ers, no, no, say it right there. The 49ers scare you? No, nah, man, I like I like the matchup. Honestly, you know, the way um Love was was trending up over since like the middle of the season, since we played him on um on Thanksgiving, I was kind of more scared of him. Aaron Jones coming back strong. I honestly felt obviously they should have won that game. They dropped two interceptions. But um I I, I mean I think I think 
I think the 49ers would be a decent matchup for us. Um, we get, we hit Purdy, uh, Purdy a couple times. If we could keep um, uh, McCaffrey under 100 yards, I mean, he get 99, that's cool. If we just keep him under 100 yards, you know, I think we'll be all right. I think we can do that. I don't think that's too tall of a task to ask for. Um, I'm, I like this team. I like this team the way they're trending up right now. I like the way they've been playing the last two weeks. The secondary is playing great right now, so I'm excited. Calvin, say it. It seems like you want to say it. Just say it. Just say the Lions are going to beat the 49ers and go on to the Super Bowl. Just say it. I'll say it with hey, you. I hope, I, mean, I, hope the, I hope the Lions no, kick the no. 49ers' ass. Right. I hope to be able to go to Vegas and watch these boys in the Super Bowl, 100%. <laughs> he wants more than hope. Yes. He wants – Stop praying. I want to guarantee it. <laughs> Stop praying. I was talking to Big Sean the other day. He was dead ass serious. He's like, hey, man, we praying for this one. Like we the, the whole city of Detroit, we praying for this. Like, so I'm right there with him. Primitive performance is the CBD company. Calvin Johnson, one of the best to ever do it. Thank you, sir.